numbers, and Diaka doing 31 years, five years the senior of Pascal. Not a great height difference between them. Diaka is a little bit smaller, and he actually fights smaller because he'll come at you pretty low. And we already talked about the rules, but let's do it another time. All righty, no three knockdown rule here. The standing eight count is in effect. We don't see that very often. Only the referee can stop the fight, and neither man can be saved by the bell in any round. So that's the matchup for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Diaka is the holder. He is undefeated, and he expects to get all he wants from Pascal. attention to the champion. Either way. Great history of boxing, of course, in the city of Montreal. Once more, let's go to the center of the ring and the ring announcer, Christian Gauthier. Mesdames et messieurs, ce combat de championnat est approuvé par le Conseil mondial de boxe et son superviseur délégué, M. Hussein Wishi de Tunisie. Il est également sous la surveillance médicale des docteurs Pierre Meunier et Marc Gagné. Ladies and gentlemen, this championship bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, represented at ringside by its supervisor, Mr. Usin Wishi from Tunisia. This fight is also under the medical supervision of doctors Pierre Meunier and Marc Gagné. Les trois juges pour ce combat. The three judges appointed at ringside to score this bout are 
Jack Woodburn de Montréal, Mr. Maximo De Luca from Tustin, California, USA, and Mr. John Keane from Wellingboro, England. L'arbitre du combat, Marlon B. Wright. When the bell rings, referee Marlon B. Wright from Montreal will handle all the action. Et maintenant, en direct du Centre Bell à Montréal, à Indigo et Bell Express Vue, Interbox et Gros Pivot Michel vous présentent le combat principal de ce gala. 12 rounds de boxe pour le championnat mondial des Milo du WBC. And now, Center here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and for millions of boxing fans across America on Versus, Interbox, and Jim bring you tonight's main event, 12 rounds of action for the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World! D'abord, dans le coin bleu, portant la culotte blanche et or, et pesant 174,9 livres. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with gold trim. His official weight, 174.9 pounds. Avec une fiche de 22 victoires, 15 par KO en 23 combats. His professional record consists of 22 victories, 15 coming by way of knockout in 23 bouts. De Laval, l'espion numéro 5 de WBC. He is currently ranked fifth by the WBC. Son adversaire dans le coin rouge porte la culotte noire et fait 173 mètres de fling. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the red corner. Wears black trunks. His official weight, 173.9 pounds. Invaincu en 26 combats. 26 victoires, 15 par KO. He is undefeated in 26 professional bouts for the perfect 26 victories. 15 coming by way of knockout. De Montréal, l'excellent champion du monde du WBC des Milou. He is the current WBC light heavyweight champion of the world. Taking a long time to oil up Pascal, don't you think? Hey, yeah, gentlemen, you've <laughs> yes. received my instruction in your dressing room. We're on a good team fight. Remember, protect yourself at all time and obey my command at all time. Good luck to both of you. We're boxing at the bell. Touch gloves. So we are set to go. The afternoon of the champion. Pascal's not going to have to look for him. If he put the shades on, he'd find him. No, that's right. He'd be there. <laughs> The interesting thing about him, he is a guy who will come right at you, but he's not necessarily a guy who's going to get his head on your chest and just bang. He really prefers to be mid-range. Absolutely right. And now you'll see that here. John Pascal is going to start out saying, you know, doing what he said he was going to try to do, which is box and use the ring and see how long that lasts. Pascal at just short of 175 pounds. He fought once before at 174. In fact, any time he's fought over 170 pounds, he's knocked his man out. And I tell you what, physically he looks terrific at the weight. He's an outstanding athlete. We talked earlier about the fact that he played hockey. Crowd's going to react to Giacomo every, almost every punch. Yeah, plus he has the kind of style that makes you think he's doing, you know, a lot all the time. And he generally is. And so far, Pascal staying to his plan of sticking and moving. Oh, oh, nice one shot. Two. Absolutely stepped in. One, two, step back. And I know we're only a minute and 
into the fight, but the Akinu's going to have to close the distance at some point because even though their, their reach is the same, Barry, it just appears that Pascal fights a lot longer. Yes, it does. And side-to-side -side movement so far is, I don't want to say it's confusing the Akinu. I'm sure he's seen it before, but he's not able just to come right at it. Well, at least, you know, we know what John Pascal's game plan is here. He's trying to execute it. That's what he told us, but oftentimes the fighter will tell us one thing one day and then get in the ring, as we saw in our last fight, right. and do something entirely different. And, you know, this guy, you know, obviously thought this out, and now he's coming in and he's trying to do it. I'm doing it pretty well so far. Yes, he is. Staying up on his toes. Going <laughs> right to the body. Very effective thus far for Pascal. See, now this is what I was saying. You don't want to stand still in front of this guy. Oh, nice right hand. It was just a little short. The jabs had set it up were pretty good, too. Yep. And the left hand, that was not a knockdown. No, I mean, he, almost, he almost ducked into something. He did something pretty dangerous there, Pascal did. down inside of 10 seconds excellent first round fought by the challenger we're coming back to Montreal now uh, here's that double jab and then uh, the right cross behind it by Jean Pascal for a terrific first round absolutely as you would draw it up to come to the second round of the Akinu's corner now they said the body's still there But I'll tell you what, I have no doubt the Akin is going to get into this fight. Oh, there is no doubt. There's no doubt. And the other thing is, John Pascal fought a very good first round, but he's kind of playing with fire, dropping those hands. Because he does not want to get caught. And the Akin is a guy who can get you out of there with one punch. And if you're hurt, generally speaking, we touched upon this. If you're hurt, you're gone. Well, that's it. Even if he doesn't get you out with one punch, all he has to do is freeze you, and then you're just as, you know, as good as gone. The yeah, that time took a step to the side and threw a hook and missed with it, but interesting tactic. Right now, he's just a beat behind Pascal. He's, you know, he, he's letting that hook go right behind the, uh, Pascal's jab, not getting it there yet, but you can just tell he's trying to time his man. Hey, stop, stop on. So very wisely, Pascal, went, when he got near the corner, tied his man up right away. Yeah, fighting a very intelligent fight so far. And, and when you look at Diakonu, and I, I have not seen him fight before other than on tape, he's a pro. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt, you know, and he's the kind of guy that does put pressure on. He may take a little time to warm up, but he got nailed there by Khalid Wright. Absolutely, and Pascal doing the right thing. He throws a power punch and gets out of there. Oh, yeah. But he is being a little cute. I don't like <laughs> Well, I like it. It makes it, uh, it's like watching a tightrope walker without a net. But if he was my fighter or my relative, I'd be yelling at him. Watch that, watch that. Just missed with that right watch hand to Giacomo. Good warning for throwing an elbow in the process. Giacomo right now is a little more in range. Yeah, he's starting to close the distance a little bit. And that's because, basically, because John Pascal's not jabbing quite as much. Wow, the right hand misses. And Connor, triple oh, time right oh. hand. Giacomo was trying to hold him, and Pascal with a hand face still punch and got careless there. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, they were holding and hitting him there. There was no warning from the referee. But the rough stuff in there is exactly the fight that Giacomo wants to pull uh, Pascal into. So another very good round for Pascal. Yeah. Round number three, two very effective first rounds fought by the challenger, Pascal.
Now we come to the third. Let's take a look at that little street fight within the fight that we saw there in round two, and you see that Diakadu had Pascal's left arm in a clamp, and Pascal just used the, uh, the free right hand to club away. Now you have to pose the question, and I'm sort of being devil's advocate here. Is Pascal getting too brave? Well, you know, it's an excellent question, and not only is he getting too brave, but can he keep up the intensity of the fight that he's fought so far? I mean, to fight this kind of a fight, he's got to keep his concentration throughout the fight, because one mistake, and he's in big trouble. You know, too much drop into the hands, too much, you know, pretty much, see what he's doing here, he's pretty much daring the to come in, and that's fine, because he is faster, but he's got to be very, very careful throughout the fight. Nice combination again. Left hand by Diakono, missed. That's what he wants to do. Two jabs and a hook. There also has to come a point, Barry, where he has to really hurt Diakono. Diakono got there with a right hand of his own. He seemed to pass right after him another one. Once you start to realize that, you know, maybe this guy can hurt me, you know, a guy like Diakono will, will just come forward unhindered. Now, Diakonu has slowly closed the gap between the two. First round, clearly Pascal. I thought Pascal won the second round, too. Yes. But Diakonu is getting a little closer. Yes, I agree. We have a long way to go in this fight, so... You know, Diakonu doesn't appear to be panicking yet. Both these guys in tremendous shape, no doubt. Both newer than capable of going to 12 rounds. Again, there you see Pascal, two punches, two quick ones to the body, and then ties him in. Mm, good right to the body. Yeah. I mean, if he can keep, keep up this tempo and fight the fight he's fighting, he can win the fight. So the thing is, at some point, you've got to get real respect out of Diakonu, otherwise he's just going to charge forward. And sooner or later, he just missed that right hand. Boy, oh, that was close. Almost a clash of heads, too. And suddenly, Giacomo has the fight on the inside where he wants it. And he did bang just yes. And again. So again, that little bit of sloppiness by Pascal creates some opportunity for Giacomo, which he hasn't been able to take advantage of yet. And we're only in round three. That's right. Look at the distance between them now. Ooh, Ooh, off and we lost balance. You know, in round three, Barry, I started to get the feeling Diakono was beginning to exert his will a little bit in the fight. You saw there that he just glanced with that left hand, but there were a couple of pretty good shots landed by Diakono, and I gave him the round. Yeah, I did too. And you know, I feel... I, I can't go back to our conversation with with Pascal yesterday. He said, if he wants to bang, I'll bang. And at the time, I thought, mm, I'm not sure that's a good idea. And I, know, I don't understand French, and he was speaking French in the corner, but I know what he was saying. <laughs> don't bang. <laughs> so now you're sure it's not a good idea. Exactly. I mean, he boxed so beautifully in the first two rounds, and there's some good shots on the inside. Yeah. But again, it's not the fight that Pascal should be fighting. And it's a hard fight to stay in with the Akinu. As you said in the open, you know, you can outbox him, but not for long. Sooner or later, he does exert his will on you. And you see how close, well, actually, Pascal landing many more punches. The Akinu not quite as active either. It's starting to come on here in round four. And again, Pascal, like, content to stand and try to bang with the champion and that's the champion's fight yeah not a lot of art on that side of the ring but i'll tell you what a lot of intensity yeah and you know to his credit though he doesn't just rush in no no not at all not at all but i mean you know he's not looking out boxing you know what he's looking to do hey come on come on You can see the distance between the two of them. Shorten. Yes. And you know, that's the thing. You know, when a guy puts constant pressure on you, like the Akinu is putting on Pascal, it is tiring. 
Just because you never feel like you can get a rest. You notice he's kind of scurrying a little bit now. Diakono keeping his distance in that sequence there, surprisingly. Good shot right there. And right. Pascal, and that's what he needs to do. Got there with a combination and then got out of it. And it's hurt. Oh, and he's hurt. And that one hurt him. And it's the guy complaining that hit me back in the head. And there's a lot of clutching going on, too. And that was Diakono that was doing the clutch. Yeah, and I don't think, you know, those were intentionally thrown behind the head. I think that was just because of the way Diakono was bending forward. I just wanted to say this before, Pascal's got great reflexes, but it's just so dangerous the way he pulls his head back with his hands down like that. Double jab and then a right hand, and Pascal now again fighting the kind of fight that he needs to fight to win, and a great round for him. I think he may have done what I said he needed to do, and I think he shook his man up a little bit in that round. Now this corner is very calm, all fight. Let's hear what they have to say. You're looking for the uppercut. If you're there without moving the legs, come on, you're gonna catch you. All right, you lost that one. Yeah. Where are you? You're there? Yeah. I want to see it with your legs. I want to see a good job. I want to see a good job, all right? All right, it was a real good round for Barry. Let's take a look. This is early in the round now. You see some real rough stuff in there by round four, Barry. Let's take a look. This is early in the round now. You see some real rough stuff in there by both guys. Diakonu basically curling around the head of Pascal, not landing the way he wants to. And then later on, you see the hand speed of Pascal, which uh, significantly better than Diakonu. That was a very good round for Pascal. I agree. Round five. Well, so far this fight has been exactly as advertised. We thought it might be an exciting main event, and it certainly has been. Yeah, it's both exciting and interesting. Yes. Because, you know, there's certainly a lot of tactics going on between both guys and... Uh, so far, hey, hey, Pascal able to work his tactics a little bit better. Only one loss between these two. And also, a pretty good fighter. Yeah, I'll say. Paul Frost with terrific 168 pound difference. I think that was the fight that convinced him to step up. Huh. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey. But I'll tell you what, Pascal made a lot of fans in that fight. He really did. Yeah. Great crowd on hand here. You know what? A really knowledgeable crowd here in Montreal, too. Great, his, great history of boxing. Here. It's been a good week for boxing. You know, I was in Madison Square Garden last week. Great left by Pascal. Wow. That's an unexpected turn of events. I'm not sure how hurt he is. He was off balance when he took the shot. But take nothing away. I'll tell you what. shot. For Diakonu to go down, he's hurt. And he's hurt again. Right hand. And Pascal is sensing it. No, no knockdown, they say. <laughs> and Pascal jumps right on him. He thinks he's hurt. I thought he went down. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I thought Diakonu went down there. I'd like to see that replay. We will see it. Slipped in. Right now, everything going Pascal's way. This man has planned his work and he's working his plan. Now listen to the crowd here in Montreal. Just a little, maybe a little warning there. Hey, hey! Come on, watch out, watch out, watch out! Yeah, you might want to mention that. Left hand 
just missed by Diakono. Diakono in close. Oh, 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 stop it. What a round. And a chopping left by Diakono. And Pascal holds on in the corner. Very smart move by Pascal. Just one more solid shot and he was down. I think he's still in some trouble. He sure is. Justifiably so. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, I think Pascal misread Diakono. I really do. I thought he, I think Pascal thought he was more hurt than he really was. Uh, it's possible. You know, at first I was going to say to you, I think he's fighting smart here because Diakono is still dangerous. Right. Yeah, this is the first knockdown. You'll see it's a left hook. Oh, that was a good shot. And here's the one that was not called the knockdown. See, I thought he got hit with that right hand and that one. He did. And his legs, you know, I can understand the referee's ruling, but... And then here is where you see the legs go a little funny on John Pascal after that right hand by Diakono. Great round. Big time round. Pascal's eyes look clear, but let's see. See how the legs are. Come to the sixth round now. Well, each has earned the other's respect, I'll say that. Oh, yeah. You know, that round reminded me, and I'm really going back here, and most of my audience probably won't remember this, but Archie Moore and Von Durrell <laughs> right here, right here in Montreal. That's a great, that's a great reference. You're absolutely right. 11 knockdowns in that that's fight. That's right. Wow. Good inside combination there by Diakonu. Yeah, in the end, let me ask you, how'd you score that last round? I actually made it a 10-8 round for Pascal. Uh, I, I gave it a 10-9 round for Pascal because of the other knockdown. Now, how is that possible? Punches in round five. Only 10 landed each way. Those were very, very good ones. Effective <laughs> punches. And there's the jab from Pascal. If I was him, I would go on that for a while. I would ride that. Double left hand from Giacomo. And Pascal comes right back. See, if Pascal gets dragged into that fight, he is putting himself into a needless peril. Thing about the Akino, as I said, he keeps coming, he's discouraging. And, and he is it right now this fight is being fought where Diakono wants to be fought. You know, absolutely. It's like fighting a steamroller, you know, just keeps on coming. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Keeps rolling. Oh, good oh, right, right hand. hand. And Diakono's hurt again. Yeah, Pascal came right back from that. And Di so much in the boxing match. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we knew that wasn't going to last. See, when Pascal does not jab, he's, he's, he's waving the red flag in front of this guy. Okay, both these guys showing a lot of grit. Ooh. I did not like the looks of that jab from Pascal. He just kind of laid it out there and then let it drop. Very dangerous. Hey, hey! Pascal still on his toes, though. But he's not, he's not letting the jab go, and he's allowing Diakonu to take that half step in. And he steps in with a combination. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, combination oh, oh, oh. for Pascal! All right, here's Pascal working that left hand late in round six, and you see three times he was able to bounce a hook off the Akin's head. The Akin's got a great chin. Yeah, that the one knockdown that he had, he was a little off balance. Yeah. Not easy to drop this guy. Pascal again with those hands way down yeah. around his knees. Yeah, one thing that you 
do, I started to mention it just for that big exchange, but is that Jockey has not been real active. He's only had four fights since May of 06. A nice combination by Jockey and a chopping right hand. But Pascal ducking way down. I think I got a little Cornell Whitaker action there. Crowd doesn't like it. They wanted to stand there and take those shots. <laughs> They're not in their corner. Nice combination of the body by Pascal. Diakono comes right back. It's a good round for Diakono now. And he needs one. Good shot. Yes, it was. And you can see there the power punch uh, edge. Pascal slightly in round six. I thought he pulled it out with that, that flurry right at the end of the round. Very tough close round. round. Yeah, it was tough. I gave it to the other guy, but close. So far, I'm certainly giving this uh, to the Akuma. Yes. And again, look at the space between them. Well, again, when Pascal does not jab, you know, he's allowing his man from right in. There's the jab. Yeah. See, the thing about the Akuma is at times he puts a ton of pressure on him, and other times he doesn't. Pascal. He had him backing up. Oh, this is high line. Yeah, it sure was. It's dangerous. A little blood from, I believe it's beneath the eye of Diakono. You're right. Uppercut by Pascal. What a fight. It really is terrific effort by both guys. I'm liking the shark in this round. That's the same. Yep. Some water in the corner there. At the bell. Many of these rounds have been like two rounds in one or even three. And here you see the beginning. It's round awesome. seven, it's all Diakono. It looked like he shook up Pascal. And then later in the round, back comes Pascal with those two jabs and a right hand. Five rounds remaining in this fight, and the outcome of the fight, I'm quite sure, will be held in those five rounds. I don't want it to end in five rounds. No, it's two. Can't they go 15 or 20? And, and two tough guys. Absolutely. You know, it's about the six, seven times that Pascal has dug that right hand into the body of the Akuma, and I mean hard. The cut was under the eye. Yeah, yeah. So it's not in a position, I don't think, where it could really cause him a lot of problems. No, but it looks like one of those things where the right hand, the knuckles of Pascal's right hand, hit the cheekbone. Back in the dug an uppercut in there. His corner wanted more of that. It's a pretty nasty looking cut, but it's not in a place where the blood's getting out. No, no. Now, that was an interesting graphic. We just saw that Pascal had a pretty decent edge there. Punches landed in round seven. I just had the feeling from watching the fight, the impression that the Akron was able to put, you know, a little bit more of what he wanted to do into that round. I, I gave the round to Pascal, but I, okay. I think that, that's, this is going to be an interesting fight for the go to the judges. Absolutely. And somebody's going to be very upset. And, and probably with good reason. Yeah. And if it's a draw, they'll both be upset. Again from Pascal to the body. The Akino has not shown any reaction to it. Again, both guys seem absolutely fit. I don't see anybody uh, starting to lose anything here. No, uh, Pascal looks fresher to me, probably because he's not marked. You know, the Akino's face is starting to show some of the effects. Again, a quick combination and then getting out of there. That's what Pascal did in the early rounds. And look at Pascal's legs. Easy, moving in and out, no problem, bouncing. He took the right hand from him. Oh, and another great shot. What a slick move that was by Pascal. Pascal, very quick handed. Yeah, he is. And, and he really is tempted to drop his hands like he is right now. He gets his hands back. Well, he's got great reflexes and he's getting away with it. But I mean, very fluid in there. Just a joy to watch. Short 
left hand by Gaffner just missed. See that when Pascal does that hold where he puts his both arms around Diakonu's waist, that should be a, an indication. Coming to the end of round number eight, another 12 round. So we come to round number nine now, and once again, another one of those rounds, flip a coin. Tell me what you like. Well, you know what? <laughs> I like Pascal in that round, and it's funny because the actor who started out pretty well, round eight, by the end of the round, he was just being belabored. He was being punished on the ropes here by Jean Pascal. I gave that round to Pascal too. As a matter of fact, I feel like Diakonu has to uh, has to win the last few rounds. I would agree. I have Pascal up by four now. I wouldn't be surprised at all if somebody had it a lot closer. Yeah, me too. Now, interestingly enough, I have the same score as you, but I got there a different way. You're absolutely right. So we're coming around now. No, it doesn't. <laughs> These guys still very dangerous. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of boxing left here. We still got, you know, one third of the fight to go. For the most part, Pascal has stayed with the game plan that he told us about yesterday. And when he hasn't, he's gotten away with it. Oh, you're right. He's worked it, if not to perfection, pretty close. Pretty close. Had his lapses, but for the most part, he has done exactly what he wanted to do. Now, one thing you know, it either won't or will be a hometown decision, whichever way you look at it. <laughs> either way, you're right. <laughs> Which one's lived here longer? <laughs> I don't know. Pretty close, I think. Yeah, I can only think he's been here about nine years. Uh -huh. Well, that's Pascal between rounds, how long he's lived here. I think Pascal actually has winners since he was a kid. Okay. He's telling me. Again, another shot behind that, but this is, you know what? That's because of the styles. It really is. You know, I think we have a tendency sometimes in boxing to, to overuse the term warrior, and yet I think that's absolutely applicable about, about both these guys. Absolutely. Yeah. He's pretty good right hand there by the Acme. Pascal's doing a great job of using the ring up to that point. Oh, there's that right hand. It is again. Just slip that punch in and got out of there. Let me clarify, I love seeing somebody else get hit with that punch. <laughs> Step in with the right hand, come back with the left hand. And then a double shot to the body. What a series for Pascal. Looks like the Akinu could really absorb some punishment. And he just keeps on coming. He's still with the double right hand. Pascal really stepping up the pace here. Getting off first almost every time. And you know, there's this thing called effective aggression. And you know, judges all score differently. And somebody could be watching this and saying, hey, you know what? The Akin is making the fight, and I'm giving him these rounds. I'm just saying. No, you're absolutely right. Although, I think you can make a case for Pascal making the fight, too. <laughs> That's my case. We're coming to round number 10. Adrian Yakinu, the light heavyweight champion of the WBC. Jean Pascal, the challenger, both from Montreal. And it's been an outstanding fight in front of almost 14,000 fans. It really has. You know, nobody's going home disappointed here tonight. And, you know, you just pointed out something. Because, you know, I tend to forget once the fight starts, who's the champion, who's the challenger, what the letters are. Because I don't really don't care. But quite frankly, there are a lot of people who score by that old thing, you've got to take the title away. And I could see somebody saying, well, Pascal didn't take the title away. I could see that happening, too. I, think I don't want to hear it, because, you know, to me, once the bell rings, everybody starts on a level playing field. And here you take a look at the uh, the total punches to round nine, and Pascal, pretty good edge there, yeah. thrown and landed. Hey. 
Pascal's corner. He hardly breathing heavy. And, and there was a little, I don't want to say concern in the corner of uh, Diakonu, but realism. Now, they basically said he got to win these three rounds. Yeah, but they also told him that he won the night, and I would beg to differ with that. Me too. In fact, for me, that is one of the more clearly defined rounds. Yeah. And somebody in his corner said, all right, you got that one, now you need three more. I don't think he had that one. A little slower pace here in round 10. And again, getting off first. <laughs> you say it won't stay that way. That's two good short hooks there by Diakonu. I think is very, without question, is still dangerous. Yeah, but the thing that has surprised me now that we're 10 rounds in, almost 10 rounds in, is that he is not, his punches haven't had the effect on Pascal that I expected him to have. He really hasn't hurt him except for that one time with that counter right. Way back in round four or five. Round five, the round he was down. That being said, he's fighting a pretty good round here. He is. Nice combination there. He was short with the right hand. And a good right hand for Pascal. Double shot to the body by Pascal. He has really worked the body well. You know, if you looked at these two guys before the fight, you would figure Diakon would be the guy who was going to work the body. Good right. Yes, it was. I think that got Pascal's attention. Yes, without a doubt. And he comes right back with three to the body. I'll tell you, I think the body work of Pascal has been very, very surprising. So once again, Pascal showing a great beard. We come now to round 11. And Pascal a little slow to get off his stool, but I don't know. I don't think it really has anything to do with the kind of shape he's in. I don't get the sense he's tired. I don't either. Boy, they were giving him one spirited Gallic pep talk in that corner. <laughs> yes, they were. I wish I knew what that guy was saying, but boy, it sounded good. Again, in Diakonu's corner, they said, you need these two rounds. And you know what? This time I agree with him. He did the last round. Yes, I get the last that was round, too. Pretty quick to start doing. <laughs> they need, like, 20 seconds of uh, gratification. My God. <laughs> Tough to please. Step Step right right out of the body. Ouch. Right now, it could be that the acting is a little bit tired because he seems to be right in the position he would want to be. He doesn't do a lot with it. He's getting out quick still, too. And he's allowing, now he's, he's kind of allowing Pascal to tie him up. Not really moving his hands all that much on the inside. He might be a little tired. Wow, the hand left the body by Pascal. Another combination of the body. You know, on my card, I think Diakonu needs a knockout. I could be completely wrong, and we've seen strange decisions, and I've seen strange cards that I filled out afterward. But. I know, but he's still standing. Yes, he is. And right now, Diakon has got to be thinking, what the heck am I in with? And he held him again, and hit him with the right hand. The left hand from Pascal. Diakon was crying, wants him to stay on top. Wow. And again, Pascal backs off and then comes back with about four shots of his own. Tell me about Pascal. He knows how to steal rounds. Still doing a little power stall, and Rockaboo still got something left. He sat on the right 
said, I think he was pushed. Coming to the end of round 11. And I think Pascal clearly shaken, and I think he still is. One round of boxing left in this championship fight. Will it decide the fight? Three minutes to go.
tiebreaker, huh? Oof. Yeah, 13th round. So there's Wells. We don't know what the scores are. I've got this man two points ahead. I, I gave the last round to Pascal. So I've got, I've got him four points ahead. I can't wait to hear these cards. That's going to be very interesting. I remember both these guys are from Montreal. Half the house is going to be outraged. Absolutely. Now, the Akinu kind of playing with this. Smart thing to do. Absolutely. The last guy I saw do that was Marvin Hagler. <laughs> Some people agreed with him. Well, I know. A lot of people, lot of people still do. Uh, <laughs> So they will total up the scores, and have not yet done that. And now I believe we are ready with the scores, so let's take it to the ring announcer, Christian Gautier, and find out. Christian! Mesdames et Messieurs, Au terme de 12 rounds de championnat, voici maintenant la décision des juges. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of 12 championship rounds, here is the judge's decision. Le juge de Luca remet une carte de pointage de 115-112. Judge de Luca scores his bout 115 to 112. Le juge Keane, 116-112. Judge Keane scores it 116-112. Et le juge Woodburn, 116-111. Judge Woodburn scores it 116-111. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and new WBC Light Heavyweight Champion, le gagnant par décision unanime et nouveau champion mondial limino du WBC, Jean. performance by Pascal, tremendous performance by the loser, I mean, the, the scorecard say it was a pretty comfortable win, but I think you can make a case that uh, we should see the fight again. Absolutely, a tremendous fight, first loss uh, for the Akinu, the new champion with only one loss to, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see this fight again. I'm sure so would uh, Adrian Diakonu, because he's got to feel that, you know, next time he can get there sooner, he can get started quicker with this guy. Because he was closing ground at the end. And Pascal fought a nearly perfect fight. Absolutely did. And we talked about game plan. He told us about it yesterday when we sat with him. And he, he executed that game plan to perfection. These two guys, they are acquaintances. They're not necessarily friends, but they do know each other. You know each other better now. Yeah, they do. Oh, boy. There are no secrets between these two guys now. And I'm sure I guarantee you they respect the hell out of each other right now. As they should. And the obligatory uh, photographs here for family, and uh, what a tremendous night, a new champion. And